<clears throat> so originality is an important thing, but to really understand the process of an artistic creation, we delve into three artistic values. These are um, effort, skill, and concept. So we have effort, skill, and concept. Um, <clears throat> In our pursuit to carve as much originality into our video or works as we can, we need to understand these three concepts very well. We talk about uh, which of them weighs more in value, which one is more important, and uh, why we should care about them. This is a philosophical talk, but mostly I will get a little bit into some technical aspects as well, because I know you, uh, you, you people love the technical aspects too. So uh, if anybody has questions, free feel to interrupt me. If anybody doesn't understand my uh, English, you, you feel free to say, what did you speak? And I will repeat uh, my statements. So effort, skill, and concept or originality. We have the, um, the following core values in an artistic project. It can be video art, but it can apply to all types of art. And uh, we will discuss more specific stuff uh, regarding the video world. Um, <clears throat> so effort. First, uh, we talk about effort. Effort put uh, into the work, is it relevant or not? Well, of course it is. How much time we spend on an artistic project can give it value, as it means that uh, we had time for details and polishing and all the beautiful stuff. But is it mandatory? Well, no. Let's take a look at the most famous digital artists in the world, Beeple, who sold over uh, $69 million in one week in crypto art probably most of you know about him. He is known because he does what he calls every days. For the last 13 years, he created one of um, one artwork per day. Uh, and not all of them are great, as he uh, told in many uh, interviews. But some of them are, uh, I quote, crap, because it calls himself people crap from time to time. And um, uh, some of them are complex and extremely powerful and can have a big emotional uh, pack impact because he uses concept from politics and so on. Uh, this is a good example why sometimes effort matters and in some cases it doesn't. Um, for 14 years he did uh, these everyday uh, small compositions and um, to achieve uh, for 13 years, he achieved and developed popularity as well, which is a topic in, in uh, a separate topic that I will not get so much into. Uh, PR and marketing and all that is an important issue in an artistic career, but it's a topic for another day. People, uh, people make something uh, sometimes simple scene, but is also creating very complex scenes very, very fast because he is not afraid of remixing other people's work and taking advantages of free or paid assets. I do not recommend this at a very early stage of your career, uh, only if you are very, very, very careful. As this is a sensitive ground with legal copyright issues and basic moral issues, but after you understand the mechanism behind the remix culture and its boundaries with respect to other artists, you can start to remix. It's uh, very much advised uh, remixing for creating progress and originality. An analogy, a simple analogy is that if you want to uh, make an, an original recipe of soup, you don't need to be a farmer and grow all of your vegetables. Uh, but coming back to uh, video art, um, <clears throat> uh, for instance, if you need a digital tree in your animation scene, whatever, what do you do? Do you model a tree? Well, I wouldn't advise you uh, that. You need some time to learn modeling. Maybe you need to, uh, you want to focus on motion graphics or simulations or VR or whatever other stuff you're passionate about. 
also why would you model something that was already modeled so many times before there are a number of uh, the trees models on uh, 3d3d.com or turbosquid.com or just find a uh, free 3d uh, tree object on google and you will find um, uh, plenty of free d objects from different kinds of trees uh, you all you can create procedural custom trees made of math could be complicated and beautiful or simple with a nice user friendly interface via an add on um, like, uh, for instance, the, the M3 add on which is a free add on for Blender. Uh, I know that uh, you people learned a lot of Blender these days. And uh, also the sampling add-on is a uh, uh, Saplic free generator. This is a built-in add-on inside of Blender that you just need to, uh, to tick it in the add-on thing. You don't need to download. It's already inside of Blender. You just need to activate it. And there are other types of uh, uh, three add-ons and uh, for instance uh, botanic it's a famous blender add-on uh, um, uh, programming company that makes add-ons and ha it has a more complicated three generator add-on but it's paid uh, but of course just don't model a tree because it's pointless unless it's in a, a like a sci-fi or a, um, a kind of a fantasy or very stylized tree or if it's in the center of your composition if it's we, we i want to make a composition about a magical fantasy tree okay then you really need to model it and create it procedurally or whatever if you want to have a cup or a chair or a something, something like that simple, just grab it from the internet. But watch out, every asset has a set of rules to use. The copyright laws, as you may well know. Models uh, can have only personal uh, user license or fully commercial licenses or have no copyright issues at all. That means they are uh, in public domain or in copyleft. I will not get so much into that. And uh, it should be stated uh, uh, in the, um, uh, the websites that I mentioned, the, the ones for models uh, and so on. Um, and uh, most commonly, uh, the family of copyright licenses are Creative Commons. Each Creative Commons license has specific things that are allowed and are not allowed. Uh, like some uh, let you use the file with no remix versions or derivations and some allow remixes, uh, some are just personal some for personal use uh, or some are completely free to the public domain. Also, just searching for basic. Yes. Uh, a personal question because sometimes uh, the model is free, but yeah, there is uh, um, uh, this um, regulation, these rules. So they are they put in just in a description of the model. Yeah. So there is no like uh, file, but they are only in description. Yeah. But could it be a situation that you download a model and it's uh, mentioned that it's free? to use, but then um, the, uh, the author of this model changes the description that is not for uh, usage. Okay, I don't know. That's a very important. It's a very nice question to, to, to ask. Uh, mostly this never happens because uh, most 3D people are not assholes, but uh, uh, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer and I cannot go into that. I didn't know the situation when uh, there was really a problem when the artist was faced that he used uh, because also the models, for example, like some paid models, uh, do you really know how to check if, for example, if model is uh, uh, is bought or if it's not legally downloaded from BitTorrent, for example? Because I, I was talking with my 3D guys and so on, and actually nobody can answer this. <laughs> how can you check? It's difficult, but sometimes you can see, I mean, people can police uh, other people 
people uh, online. I mean, if they see some irregu irregularities and they know the people who created the model, they can shout out to that and say that, hey, you didn't, do you have a license for that? Sometimes this happens. And I do have an example of something similar, but not actually against the law. I will get that, uh, back uh, into that uh, actually in the next uh, next phrases I have prepared. Uh, should I answer? I don't know the answer and it's a tough question. So I will go on, but I have a story similar to what you uh, uh, told me. Um, so also uh, searching for images or uh, for textures is the same thing. You don't have a budget and you want to use Google, for instance, under search options, be sure to have a set to commercial to be able to use it. You have this uh, details, the size and everything use commercial. Uh, so be very careful with that and also with tutorials. This is the, the story I wanted to, uh, to say regarding the questions, which is a more delicate and not so straightforward subject. This is not uh, legal advice. This is more moral advice from my own thoughts. If you follow an online tutorial, Please don't just post or use the same technique you just learned following mechanically what the teacher has said. It's not your idea. You just had a learning session, uh, not a working session. I've seen people with so not so much moral fiber. For example, I saw a young video artist on Instagram who used the tutorial from a teacher that I personally know. Shout out to Paqueta12 and uh, a lot of respect for him uh, and just set the camera a bit differently but 99% of the resulting video was pretty much the same with the teacher's video. So no credits, no nothing, just posted it as its own creation and was making quite some followers by doing that. Uh, so I commented on this post, uh, suggesting to him that he might want to tag his teacher, and I got blocked. Um, so please, if you learn from a tutorial, uh, to integrate that technique in your art, you need to remix the hell out of it. This will make it clear that you understand the tool set, or better yet, just use it like a tool, not as an end product. Use it as a building block to do something more complex, get techniques from other tutorials and blend them together. Use several tutorials on one piece and add your own personal flavor, color, style, materials, whatever. This is how styles and culture grow by building on what other people have created in the past, not by copying them, but getting inspired by them to do more on one piece and, uh, um, and just, just uh, evolve, make evolution. Coming back uh, to getting models fast and reduce your uh, efforts, some people say ma modeling is dying. And I tend to agree to some extent. If we are talking about fantasy sci-fi star for creating new innovative objects or very stylized objects, modeling is definitely not dead. But if we're talking about basic objects in everyday life, let's take the three example again, we now have 3D scanning. So uh, you all know about 3D scanning a little bit, but with just a series of pictures taken by your phone and put in a simple to use software like Meshroom, for instance. If nobody knows, Meshroom from Alice Vision is uh, a photograph a photogrammy application that is free and pretty pretty nice so you can take an object or a standing or a person standing still from real life and turn it into a digital model no more uv texture mapping cuz you get the texture already set up very easy to do of course there are special studios that 3d scan ultra professionally like the the one that i uh, had it uh, right here actually
I don't have it anymore, but it's like a cylinder and just uh, hundreds of cameras around and you take just one shot and boom, you have the 3D scan. That's the more uh, professional way to do it. But uh, I advise you to play around with just taking pictures around an object and putting it to, into mesh room and you will get pretty, pretty nice uh, uh, results. Or also you have uh, the LIDAR scanning that you experimented in the workshops before with the new eye phones and uh, iPads, which are getting better, but are not so good at the moment, or other more specialized scanners, uh, LIDAR scanners, but very, very expensive and uh, mostly used for architecture. Uh, if we are talking about video, it's good to understand uh, there are free animation libraries expanding. The most popular of my knowing that I use a lot is uh, Mixamo by Adobe which gives uh, free FBX files that have uh, skeleton and animation data, plus a bunch of, uh, of free models. So it's about Mixamo. This is the library from Adobe and you can get, um, you need to create an account and be logged in but you can get uh, animated characters, dancing, flying, doing uh, all sorts of basic stuff that you can use in any video game, video art, whatever for free and a bunch of models, but you can add your own model and uh, just take the free animation you know, you, to make it personal. So um, that's another very fast way to do some simple animations. But again, if the animation is the main person, pers uh, purpose of your work, don't do that. Only if it's a background thing, it's a, it's a secondary thing in your project. Um, so uh, to cut your efforts down as much as possible, to leave room for the other two value, uh, you need to, so it's better to, to cut effort in my opinion, to, to leave room for the other two values we'll speak about, um, skill and concept. Another example uh, is why should you create a hyper realistic painting where when now there is an 8K picture photo camera? I understand 20 years ago to make a, or a big mural, mural painting to do a hyper realistic painting, but why take so much time to do something hyper realistic when we have photos or videos and stuff like that? Personally, I believe this is a waste of time, uh, but uh, if a concept is originally original but badly executed, it is still possible to imagine how it could look like if it was executed with more skill or effort, but the other way around doesn't work. If you put a lot of skill and effort, you will not uh, necessarily get originality. Cutting down the efforts to an extreme mode, more conceptual art can have very li little actual effort. Let's take for instance, for uh, 33, four minutes and 33 seconds by uh, music composer, John Cage. A conceptual piece uh, with no notes, just pure silence. Uh, played for four minutes and 43 seconds at any instrument. Uh, the conceptual implications of this one are um, immense uh, in a theoretical way of seeing music as a philosophy of music, um, as a philosophy of aesthetics, but the actual efforts are minimal. It's just a bunch of people staying close to a piano or a musical instrument and doing nothing for four minutes and a half. I saw even a death metal cover of four minutes and 30. It was just a death metal band looking all death metally and just not playing anything. Um, so I, uh, uh, I admire this conceptualization of, uh, of things, uh, but uh, I do not admire people that sell this kind of stuff for a lot of money, in my personal opinion. I saw recently uh, uh, an artist that sold for 15,000 euros an invisible sculpture made out of nothing. So I'm not really fond about that, but if you'd use that as a method to theorize something, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, so um, 
Of course, nobody would have cared about the conceptual values of this music composer John Cage's work uh, that is purely made out of silence if he wasn't well known for other more normal work. Our two examples, Beeple and John Cage, are considered masters in their field. So it is safe to say that they possess or possessed, as John Cage is dead, the next uh, artistic value that we will speak about, and that is skill. So, skill. Um, so, we saw that effort is not so mandatory for artistic value after all, even though render times can be a pain, but that's another topic for another day. The great artists that do a piece in a few hours or a day uh, and uh, can look like a masterpiece, like people were, were doing, uh, do have years and years of study and practice before that. So it's a combined effort of, uh, it, it's kind of an effort, but uh, the effort from the past uh, combined, I, uh, I present it to you as a skill, a skill. Um, <clears throat> so, um, um, so an expensive piece does not reflect the effort put into that specific piece, but it reflects the time spent to reach the level of skills that allows you to do very complex things fast. Learning uh, different skills can provide originality too. There are several types of uh, 3D and motion graphic software and learning a wider range of them can give you more horizons if you do not know in uh, what exactly field you want to settle in. And more originality at the same time can be provided by, by learning these different types of, uh, of, uh, of skill softwares. Uh, because if you do a normal traditional soup, coming back to the soup analogy, with a mainstream software pipeline, it can be good, but if you in, um, <clears throat> invent a new recipe with different ingredients that do not usually mix, but you find a new way to mix them, you can raise the boundaries of new techniques, as most techniques are a sum of smaller, older techniques. Learning more software have advantages, but also disadvantages. To be a generalist is not advised at all if you want to work in a high level company, for instance, in the video game industry or big animation studios. To have financial and mental stability, being specialized into a tool, you are able to work at a large scale collective with very professional large scale results. But for video art and uh, I don't know, achieving originality in general or independent artist is usually the best to know as many tools as possible. So there are a few main categories of tools. Classical 3D, procedural, editing, playback, mixing, and specialized tools. We will speak just briefly about each of them. So classical 3D softwares, general 3D, uh, that do general 3D modeling, rigging, animation, or motion graphics like Blender, Maya, Cinema 4D, 3DX Max, the big players. Um, these are the classical 3D software, in my opinion. Pro then the next one, procedural and generative graphics. This one relies on, uh, these types of uh, software rely on the nodes, on nodes and procedural workflow with real-time results, everything modular, modular visual, visual programming in essence. <clears throat> Very good for VJing or interactive installations. Like, uh, for instance, this is 343 for, uh, from John Cage, but uh, like Touch Designer, the one that I use, and uh, maybe I will teach you in one of the next classes. Uh, VVV. Um, 
and uh, notch effects. These are the main free ones that are used uh, are used the most. But there are um, some underground softwares, uh, less expensive, but not so great, like Magic, uh, Max MSP, or Pure Data. Um, most classical software have a procedural side of them too, mostly in their shader editors, as you could see in Blender, for instance. But this is not the main focus of the classical 3D software. Hence, the render engines are not fully real time and are not made for live shows. Um, <clears throat> there is also, uh, and all of these. Uh, Touch Designer Notch and uh, VVV are mostly doing kind of the same thing with some differences. I mean, it's like Coca-Cola and Pepsi. It's, you can go for one or the other. You can have mostly the same, uh, the same things in the end. So this is not the main focus on the classical 3D softwares to use a procedural workflow, but they do have some proceduralness inside of them. Hence, the render angels, the ones for uh, classical 3D, are not fully real time and are not made for live shows as the ones th that are using the procedural softwares. Uh, there is also a very weird exception, but still master as procedural workflow, that it is uh, Houdini. Uh, Houdini, uh, which is an industry standard for uh, FX and uh, a lot of great 3D work, is fully procedural, but has a slow render engine, but a realistic and good one. So it has a similar type of rendering with the classical softwares, but is purely uh, node-based procedural. Uh, going to the third category, uh, mixing and playback or editing, you need a video editor from time to time if you work in video, at least for, me, for some marketing needs. I use Premiere because I know it for a long time, but I highly advise you to get DaVinci Resolve, which is free and used to be a color grading software a long time ago. Uh, and now it was actually one of the best color grading tools out there. And now is a standalone great video editor plus all the color grading uh, wonders that it has. I use also After Effects for retouching and transitions or simple 2D animations, but Blender also has a nice compositor and for but not so professional. And also for playback and video mapping, by far the most well-known is Resolum. You can, all, uh, you can use all the procedural software for playback too, um, for kind of video map. I mean, in Touch Designer, you can do a little bit of video mapping, but not so professional as Resolum. But for high efficiency in VJing and mapping, Resolum or Mad Mapper are uh, your best options. There are others like Modulate or Isadora, but these uh, are older and not so much used anymore. And now the more uh, specialized tools for special needs. For instance, I'm a big fan of fractal softwares. I love fractal geometry and, there are, uh, and here we have Mandelbull 3D for instance, which is a completely free um, software. And uh, we will talk about it tomorrow morning in more depth. Uh, and it's a, a free tool that you don't need to install. You just uh, have a 70 megabyte zip file and that's it. Or Chaotica for 2D fractals, but it's paid. Mandelbulber, Incendia, J Wild File, Ultra Fractal, there are plenty of others, but also some other stuff, I, uh, some other software I've mentioned can have some uh, other types of fractals. You can get nice uh, fractal results in Touch Designer or even in Blender, for instance, uh, and also uh, software have different styles, renders and formulas. There are other specialized tools, of course, for other um, geeky stuff, for instance, real flow for making um, this is Resolum. This is Mad Mapper. 
this is Mandelbrot 3D. Uh, and this is a real flow, which is the uh, best, uh, I think it's one of the best uh, or the best uh, water simulator out there. Or um, Embergen for, um, or FumeFX, but uh, I know more about Embergen for smoke or fire and explosions. And of course, the universe is vast, motion tracking software, marvelous designer for clothes, etc. So there are a lot of ingredients to mix. So let's start mixing. But is this, uh, is it, is skill really that important? Um, Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it's not, in my opinion, even if some people might argue it is the most important, but uh, it, uh, is it really mandatory to do artistic work of value, to have skill? You might say yes, but in some cases it may not, especially in the fast paced world ever changing with people having phones that can film and 3D scan super easily, apps that can remix videos at our fingertips. I can speak by uh, about my own case. I used to be a journalist at um, uh, and my first job during college years writing for Vice magazine. Uh, but then I got myself into organizing the world's only psychedelic film and art festival called Tripoteca. I never uh, had any previous organizing experience. I was 22 years old when I started. I didn't know how to manage so many people and teams. Uh, I gave some effort, talking about the effort, but I couldn't give skill. I, I just didn't have it. But because it was an original idea and nobody else from the world did that, I got a lot of people interested and willing to help out. The world's top digital artists were happy to donate their work and so on. And the festival went from its second edition onto a world tour. And since 2012 until the last edition, a couple of years ago, it reached 15 countries and more than 25 cities. Uh, reached um, <clears throat> live a lot of people and presented works of hundreds of artists from all over the world, some nominated for Oscars, some that worked at Adult Swim, a, a lot of great uh, video art. Headed by me, a noob, a nobody. So in the end, the concept weighs a lot. Originality prevails over the other two. Of course, the best uh, is to have effort, skill, and pure originality combined, or at least two of them. But in each project or team, the proportions of these three values are and going to be different. But originality brings uh, skilled people and gives energy to take effort and time. So the concept is the core of the experience. So let's talk about concept or pure originality. How do we get it? Originality is the most important artistic value, usually the most highly rated value in an evaluation system in most artistic competition, even though the ratings are different from competition to competition and the values are not all the time the same, almost all of them will speak about the concept of originality, the contest. First, we need inspiration. Where do we get inspiration? Well, the most obvious answer, if we talk about video art, is to watch videos. Of course, it sounds like skipping school to watch online videos and not very productive, but it certainly is. The trick here, is to watch only valuable vi uh, videos and cut all the crap out of your video diet. That means less YouTube and more Vimeo and uh, or other examples like that. Everybody, uh, I think, knows what Vimeo is. I, I don't. This is where I had my video, and it's a great, great platform for a lot of uh, original art. <clears throat> okay, so um, 
do you care about um, about uh, a character in a detective drama? Who murder who, or who do you want to learn, or do you actually want to learn about aesthetics or color use? This is the actual question. To watch only the most original videos, you can find in, in you can find them and it's a, it's some effort to find them so it's not the most simple task and of course you will want to watch some simple stuff from time to time to clear your mind some netflix or something like that like you you want a piece of candy after you ate right all day which is fine but don't eat a lot of candy eat real food for the eyes, watch the greatest animators that have ever lived in all different styles, 2D, 3D, CGI, whatever, watch masterpieces, full length films, but also short viral loops, anything that has originality. Go to events, video mapping events, galleries with new media art, holograms, VR, AR, Honestly, uh, AR is not my choice of medium as I, when I go, want to go to a gallery, I don't want to watch my phone. I want to escape the phone when I go to a gallery. Or games, uh, at least some uh, game trailers. I don't have the time to play actual games, but I enjoy uh, the aesthetics of trailers a lot. Vimeo again, video, Vimeo is God at video art original pieces music video festivals, go to social media groups about different softwares or types of art, create your own bubble or of real or online friends that share your own interest, but don't get caught up in any existing uh, popular bubble. For instance, I play live at a lot of festivals. I need to earn a living. I can play only to music that I truly enjoy. I need to put food on the table. Uh, and some festivals have a specific theme, whether it's rap, rock, classical, uh, minimal, side trans, whatever. But in my opinion, if you fall into a specific genre of art, it's a trap for originality. I never listen at home to music that falls uh, into a specific uh, category of style. Like, hey, hey, what kind of music do you uh, listen to? The type that doesn't fall into a genre. Um, uh, so uh, there can be exceptions at the top of a genre. Uh, the monsters that had started the genre and are um, pushing its boundaries uh, uh, further, but 99% of a genre is not original music. Same is in video art, but it's more subtle because it's a newer genre. It's a, not genre, but it's a newer uh, branch of, uh, of artistic uh, domain. You can have, for instance, reaction diffusion enthusiasts. Reaction diffusion is a procedural way of creating uh, uh, video art or water simulation professional, fractal artists, or people that uh, base their work on iterations, or uh, old school analog feedback and video circuits crowd. Um, but my advice is to use genres and, and techniques as a palette of colors in your composition, not like standalone concepts. So get inspired by genres, but don't fall into them. Also, as more general inspiration, traveling and seeing wonderful, special, different places gives inspiration. Here you should find uh, that um, quality is much more important than quantity, of course. I'd rather go into a holiday just once a year in a different continent than 10 holidays in countries neighboring the one that I'm living in. No offense, I love being in Ukraine, but I do prefer Thailand or something like that. Uh, as you can learn so much more about a culture that is very different from your culture. 
they say mixed race babies have much more chances of having stronger DNA and becoming stronger physically or smarter. So the same goes for life experiences. Uh, mix different kinds of people and places in your life and find places to relax that are truly nature's works of original art. Places that feel like there are no other places like this on earth. Don't just settle for a nice grass field and woods for a picnic. That's not original. Be sociable, connect with people with same interest and create partnerships and new collaborations. Play around and create with friends. If you want to become a video artist, you will become friends with many musicians or sound designers as they will always be your complementary partner in live performances, music videos, or installation. Same goes with event organizer. organizers. Maintain a good relationship. Try to be transparent and understand the scale of their event to be able to give fair prices. Growing a good business relationship and a friendship can be overlapping and the same thing at some times can be kind of the same thing. And when uh, gaining a friendship statue, you can take the essence of the style of the people when you breathe in the energy of the people and get inspired in a more direct manner, seeing how they behave on a daily basis. And of course, try to reach out for different kinds of people to create multidisciplinary projects because they are powerful catalysts for originality. And to talk a bit about school, I don't think institutional traditional school gives inspiration. Uh, they mostly destroy it. Curriculum uh, and uh, school programs are mostly outdated because of formalities, even if some teachers um, over there actually <laughs> uh, are trying to, to make a change and uh, to bring uh, new things in the, in the program. So mostly digital art school teach outdated software. I, I cannot blame, the, blame them, but you cannot be on top of the game with the latest add-ons and everything if you don't research and subscribe to the people that test the newest versions of the softwares. YouTube is the biggest school for actual skill learning, in my opinion, and Vimeo is the biggest resource for inspiration. They won't teach originality at school, better leave it and create things for yourself and have a flexible flux of teachers that you personally select, like residences like this one or YouTube teachers, as I said before. To end the lecture, I would like more people to focus on connecting the dots. The dots being either styles, softwares, hardware, locations, if it's filming or mapping, or any other elements. See which uh, you never seen in combination and use them as a new mix. Because everything is a remix, nothing is truly original, but let's do wild remixes until we reach the illusion of originality. That's it. Yeah. Any questions? I have a question. If sure. you would be a geometric figure, which figure would you be? Um, <laughs> some type of um, uh, five fractal formulas combined. <laughs> Not any in particular. I don't want to be a racist. <laughs> or at least five. I would be a Rome. <laughs> a what? A Rome. A Rome? Mm -hmm. What's that? Yeah. A, a Rome. Okay, it's yeah. Like, uh, Square, yeah, 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 understood. It's hexagon? Yes. Or no, from no, no, hexagon. It's like uh, if you're a Zerium, yes. Like a diamond. Oh, oh yeah, logo. Okay. <laughs> Ethereum logo. Yeah, yeah. That's very bling bling, <laughs> yeah.
What? That's very bling bling of you. If you like the diamond shape. No, diamond is too there. I just want to be a pro. Okay. <laughs> or maybe a coop uh, in a state of pro. Okay. Stays on one. Uh, I hope you don't want to be the default cube from Blender because that gets deleted all the time. <laughs> Can I ask you uh, about collapse? And uh, do you have any suggestions on how to uh, communicate and find consensus or maybe um, the uh, the other other work I just forgot. So imagine the case, imagine the situation when you have like a, during the club you have or a vision or you like moving in a certain direction and you really like the the direction that you that you feel and are moving into and the person or a group of people that you're collabing with is like moving a little bit in a different direction and actually requesting from you to go in the other one. Like what would be the suggestions for different cases in, in this range? Well, I uh, enjoy when all, a lot of energies collide and uh, become a soup of energies and some energies are more powerful than others. That's why we have the directors and so on. But I uh, really like when some, some, somebody brings a new energy to the project and changes it completely. Uh, it's just good to be open to new horizons and uh, listen to everybody. But of course, if you think that your idea is really, really important, you have to uh, speak with a certain tone and make other people understand that it's very important. So it's important not to be shy because if you are brilliant and shy, maybe your idea will not get through. Do you think it's, it's okay that some collapse could uh, finish up with a conflict? Uh, or like we should not go to the compromises? Well, I, I don't want to end in a conflict, but I, for instance, at Agaton, we had just uh, the, the first video that I showed uh, is uh, we went in the uh, woods. We had only two days to film and some shots we couldn't get. And um, some people wanted to shoot something first. The other, we had some different opinions and me and the DLP, we had a huge fight, uh, like very, very tensionate but only for five minutes. And in that five minutes, we understood exactly what we need to do. But it was very tense. I don't want to explain it to you, but we shouted and spoke bad words and stuff like that. But after five minutes, everything was okay. And it helped. So I, uh, I tend to, to feel that some conflicts are very beneficial. And sometimes if you are a little bit more aggressive, if some other people are, don't get offended, it can be good because you can state how important that thing is for you. So you would not suggest to hidden some opinion if you have- a No way, no, no. Okay. And anybody from the project is a little, uh, if they're only the color grader, for instance, and have an opinion about the editing, I, I'm eager to hear it. For instance, at the, the, the first video, I was very involved in the music. I collaborated with, uh, I don't know music myself, but I collaborated with all the musicians and I had uh, the most um, things that I wanted to say that, hey, here you might do something different, here you might do. I was very involved in the editing, so I knew the, the sounds by heart. And uh, some musicians even forgot that they had some little, little sound there. And uh, I was, hey, don't, don't lose that in the final edit or, or something like that. We worked on a timeline and everybody was commenting on the timeline. And everybody from the, uh, from the video or from the music side could write comments on the, the music on each timeline. So, and I had the most comments. I had like 30 comments were annoyed but also happy to to work and make it better is it like most of your project are you working in team or solo um, half half or something like this 
but actually most time, I mean, uh, I have a lot of personal projects that I do alone, but most paid projects that are not just for online showing, they have a team. I mean, I, I cannot, I, I'm not at the people state of uh, selling NFTs for millions of dollars, unfortunately. Can you show some uh, last projects your yes. Okay. Uh, so you can find me on Instagram or Facebook or on this to that arrow. Okay, you're welcome. I don't know. I can show you some last stuff I work in. For instance, this is uh, this is fractals uh, made in Blender with a 3D scan uh, that I did for a team of radiophonic. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, online radio, like a theater play, a radiophonic theater play um, for a sci-fi comedy scene. And uh, th this was my uh, animation that I did, but it's just a very small loop, but it was rendered in uh, two or three days. So uh, it's just a loop, but it took some time. And this is a... Uh, uh, um, a 3D scan of a car. I took the 3D scan. This robot is taking a, a crap. Uh, it's actually uh, about a detective robot that uh, has issues of being gay. It's, it's a very nice story. Um, and uh, I got inspired uh, because when I was making the 3D uh, scan, uh, I stepped in the uh, pile of shit. And it was very hard to take it out uh, in the bathroom afterwards. Uh, and also, they didn't tell me a lot of stuff. I will create a radiophonic musical play, comedy about robots, gay robots and murders and detectives and stuff like that. And I said, OK, but I didn't know exactly what was happening. So I didn't have the play. And uh, so I made the shit things also because uh, in uh, detective movies, you would never see uh, the detective taking uh, crap. You don't see them at the bathroom. So I wanted to uh, to make a new scene and uh, new things to be seen. Uh, and also, I have a question about how, how do you show your work, for example, this video work? What do you prefer to show them? Uh, is it uh, on small screens, on big screens, in galleries, on the streets? Uh? Uh, anywhere I can f uh, find a good place. So I had... Uh, big video mapping shows like uh, palaces. I had uh, one, the biggest uh, one was 137 meters. Uh, I can show you that, I think. This one was my biggest uh, building. But I also enjoy uh, live uh, live performances a lot uh, in a small uh, in a normal screen that uh, like a cinema. Cinema is perfect for me. I really love playing in a cinema with a musician and a big big screen behind him. Uh, but also anywhere. The, the, the other one was on YouTube and it's not showing anywhere else than the YouTube. And I also love this new holographic technology that I would like to invest more in the holographic um, uh, screens from uh, uh, Looking Glass Factory, uh, the head of the character that I show you before. So it's in 45 uh, angles, you can see a 3D object. And uh, uh, some people even do NFTs with them. And I think this is a future for galleries because uh, it's like AR, but you don't need a phone. You just step inside of the room and you see a 3D composition on the wall. Uh, which is perfect. I have only the very small uh, screen, but there are big screens also um, uh, pretty recently made by um, the Looking Glass Factory. But also I really do enjoy to make static works also rendered at very high pixel rates, so sometimes over 12,000 pixels per 12,000 to make a very big uh, canvas prints that I like uh, that they my work can look a little bit like paintings. And this is uh, for uh, gallery purposes, of course. Uh, 
uh, or for selling them, but I'm not, so I, I don't do a lot of money by selling the prints uh, for one way or another. I get to, I have to get more, uh, more popular. But this is the looking glass factory. And uh, yeah, it's great. You can use it with Blender, you can use it with Touch Designer, you can use it with a lot of softwares. And it's, uh, it's the future, yeah. I don't know, this is uh, it fractals. Oh, this is a Mixamo character that I was talking to you about. So it's just a floating animation, a simple one, that, but the main focus is on the fractal. That's what I took so much time to render. But uh, putting a simple character gives more personal touch, more, I mean, people feel more connected to the work. Uh, and they said, hey, finally, you don't do all only um, uh, abstract things, and it's good to add some characters from time to time. And the music is copyleft for public domain. It's, uh, some, the most times I try to collaborate with some uh, musicians and a lot of musicians write to me, hey, let's collab and stuff like that. But uh, sometimes I really want to put a fast video that I worked on online and uh, you can uh, have a music, uh, free music archive Dot com. You can just write free music archive in Google and you find it. And there's a lot of free music. Uh, you just have to be careful that it is in the public domain. Uh, can you please give an example how to uh, credit the artist if you, for example, download the 3D model from uh, Sketchfab for with uh, well, yeah, I, I don't uh, use a lot of uh, models or the Mixamo thing doesn't have artists, it's like a company. Yeah. But for instance, uh, I do uh, make a lot, a lot of credits uh, to my teachers and uh, stuff like that. Uh, for instance, this uh, live stream that I did, this is a free hour live stream, uh, doing animations for free hours constantly for... Uh, for a DJ and uh, and uh, here we have the credits, which I don't know if you can see so well, but I do credit uh, f uh, two of my teachers and one uh, programmer that uh, personally spoke with me and gave, uh, and I bought his uh, uh, add-on for Resolume. Uh, and uh, I credit also the the company that created the event uh, and the musician. So it's a pretty big uh, credits uh, thing. And it's important to have a large description. And also some people don't want to credit people or are too lazy or are ashamed, but I think it's uh, educational first. And also if you uh, have a big description with a lot of people, it looks more professional and more uh, like more people worked at it. It feels more as a collaboration. Also, the, the teachers liked it. Uh, they, they, they're happy when they're, uh, they're tagged for their work. Uh, 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 ценность, uh, має, uh, да, має робота для глядача. Ну от найбільша цінність, яку найбільшу цінність має uh, відеоробота для глядача. What the biggest value could be from the video art piece for the viewer? Uh, I just having fun. <laughs> I don't know, it's just beautiful thing, like looking at the flower, uh -huh. looking at the flower, it's something beautiful. I mean, you can do uh, social uh, social commentaries about stuff, uh, sure, but it's personally not my thing. I, I, I like to bring humor and beauty, this is what I like. But of course, you can do all political stuff with video art, anything that you want. But if you do trying to do originality in video art, 
mm, it's mostly going to the beautiful side. In the beautiful side, you you have originality. In social and political things are important, but they are you cannot have so much originality in uh, in the ones that have a message. Which could be an interesting discussion. Yes, because the message in beauty can be metaphysical, so it actually has a message, but or multiple ways of seeing a message or yeah of course like it's not contradictive it's not uh, you can have both like the the beautiful humorous and like yeah you can have both that that would be great the originality yeah. could be in all of those aspects yeah that that's the best thing but it's hard to have uh, yeah. everything uh, but also as a value in fractal art for instance if it's more complicated geometry i think people just seeing complicated geometry you can have a deeper thought patterns because if you see simple geometry if you uh, only go in uh, if you are only in uh, in buildings all the time working in a building you want to see trees why do you want to see trees because it's a very weird geometry it's a natural geometry and natural geometry is the clo uh, fractal geometry is the closest to natural geometry so the eyes want to see something more complex is more relaxing for them and at the same time uh, can bring more ideas. So they don't bring a, a specific idea when you look at uh, complex geometry, you don't think, hey, uh, this political regime is not good or something like that, of course, but you can have patterns of thinking. You have you can have new uh, patterns of thinking that you then apply to whatever interests you in real life. Cool, thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. It was very, very inspirational. Super. Thanks. Again. Thanks for listening.